Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. Hello world, hope you're feeling as good as I am. I want to big up all my homegrown listeners out there and welcome all the new listeners. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. want to thank everyone who has been listening and sharing. Please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Please check out the website, homegrownwithgcode.com to listen and for all things homegrown. The podcast is now available on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, all your podcast platforms. We're also very, very interactive, so please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at my G Cole. The video of this interview is available on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is episode 74, and today's special guest, industry professional, entertainment attorney, and author, Mr. Lloyd Stanbury. This episode is brought to you courtesy of Aqua Gem Records' latest releases, Cherish the Day by Althea Hewitt, Just Leave Me Alone by Sharia Elise, and Daughters by G Cole. This is my friend. talking to music and and, and and this is the this is the condensed version of the title right now all right it's just because we only got a couple hours but it's a, a we're talking about music industry professional entertainment attorney and of course author all right mr lloyd stanbury we again the, the title the credentials stem deeper than that but um that's what we're getting you with today how are you today sir welcome 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 how's it going yeah, I'm doing good and um, happy to be here. It's been a long time coming. We've yes, sir. To have this little reasoning. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's now happening, yeah? Time, 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 right? Not before it's time. True, true. Not before it's time. Nikki Fire, blessings, blessings, blessings. Um, we got the book here, which I'm going to get into in a minute. Um, got this book probably about a year ago, right? And I kind of treat it like almost like 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 the other book by... um. This business are regular of, of music, where I go through it almost like my encyclopedia. So I'm not going page through, but I feel like okay, I need I need, I need to check out what's going on here and so forth, and mm -hmm. and I and, and I catch up as I go. And I implore people to get the book because we always complain, especially in the reggae industry, Jamaican music culture, that the knowledge is not there. Somebody, there's always somebody that puts the work and the time and the effort into putting it together for us. But I think sometimes not only do we not want to read it. Probably want somebody to read it to us. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, so we gonna go through a lot of things, but going straight into it, I know not only do you work and reside in the in, in the industry of reggae music, but you're a fan of it too. You know what I mean? For all these years, loving reggae music, 
Um, quite a broad question, but from your vantage point, how are you feeling about the industry right now? Um, well, I look at it from two perspectives, mm -hmm. you know, um, from the Jamaican scene mm -hmm. as well as from the international scene. Mm -hmm. um, from the Jamaican scene, I think we, we have made some, you know, progress right. in recent years. Right. Um, you know, we have had some encouraging new artists, mm -hmm. you know, we have to number among them coffee right. of course right right you know people like chronics um young artists who have um given us new reasons to to love our music right, right. you know they're taking it to an international level right in a short space of time those two artists mm -hmm. you know i mean chronics came on the scene at about 17 18 19 and in a very short time he was right. you know the biggest artist coming out of Jamaica. Right, right. And he has launched himself internationally and Kofi has now come at 19 mm -hmm. and won Grammy as the first woman wow. to win the reggae Grammy. Right. So that is very encouraging for music right. from a domestic standpoint. Mm -hmm. And we have had some um, positive movements as well in terms of um, what the government of Jamaica has done. Um, I've always been a critic of the government mm -hmm. of Jamaica when it comes to our music and our culture. Right. But, uh, you know, when credit is due to someone, you give them credit. Got it. You know, and from the standpoint of supporting and promoting our brand, mm -hmm. I think the government of Jamaica has done fairly well right. in recent years with their support of Reggae Month, for example, mm -hmm. as well as the push to have reggae music of Jamaica inscribed by UNESCO wow. as you know an intangible heritage product mm. that should be preserved. That's big. Yeah. That's big. So we have to commend the government for those initiatives. Right. Um, other than that, I think we have, as I posted recently, I think our industry, our local industry, um, is really lagging behind mm -hmm. what is happening in the international reggae music market. Right. So I would see that as a, as a, as a somewhat as a, as a negative right. in that um, reggae music is just growing right. globally. But Jamaica seems to be the gap between Jamaicans participating in reggae mm -hmm. and the international community participating in reggae seems to be widening, wow. in wow. my view. Right. And so that's how I see you know, the industry. Yeah, yeah, not sure. Yeah, not sure. At this point in time. And the post you're talking about, you said, has the global reggae music market outgrown the capabilities of Jamaica's domestic music industry um, infrastructure? A question like that, I really love the question. W what I love about questions like those, especially when they're phrased by people like yourself, is really to sit back and watch the response. You know what I mean? And the response most of the time is what really gives you an indication of, of, of exactly what is happening. Yeah. You know, the one thing I'll say about reggae music I, I say it a lot on here and people don't like to hear it. You know, we always try to figure out where the errors lie, right? For lack of a better word, who we blaming for all this stuff. Yeah, true, true. We, we cast it on artists. Yeah. We cast it on sometimes the government, deservedly so, right? We cast it on musicians, producers, a whole bunch of people. There's a little sect amongst it all that people shy away from casting any of the responsibility on. And I have no shame in doing so. The fans. The people who consider themselves reggae music fans. I think they've empowered themselves a lot as critics, but they don't do enough to support the music. So the person that will critique it down to the nuts and bolts have never bought it. Don't support it when, 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 when they complain about, you know, the quality of the work, whether it's good or not. When you put your hard earned effort and resources in it to create a quality product and you put it out there, you know, you might get, all right, cool, sounds good, but you're not going to get the support that's going to push it to another level. You know what I mean? What What's your viewpoint or, or, or how, what do you think about, and, and when we say the fans, not just the people consuming the music, but those people who are responding to these posts that you put out there? Um, I agree with you. Um, the fans, the supporters of reggae, mm -hmm. and whenever I say reggae, I see reggae as Jamaican reggae, right. and I see reggae as the global reggae right. music scene. Right. I think people who support and critique, um, oftentimes 
make their comments without you know informing themselves mm. adequately as to what the issue is that they're commenting on right right you know Jamaican people just love to talk you know <laughs> we used to say talk and your mouth got crossy right <laughs> yeah, they, they love to talk and oftentimes they talk without right you know it's ignorant appropriate speech. information <laughs> and, and that, that, that that doesn't help us mm-hmm. at all you mm-hmm. know so I'd implore people to spend a little time to find out, you know, what the real situation, get the facts, right, right. you know, and then make a contribution in terms of an opinion right. that can help us to move forward right. rather than just shoot off your mouth without necessarily, you know, <laughs> digging deep into the right. issue at hand. Yeah, and a, a lot of that happens. Too know. much. Um, so I, I, I use social media to generate conversations mm-hmm. um, sometimes I just ask a question and I don't comment I do notice that <laughs> <laughs> I do you know, notice I, that I, but I, I love I, it I ask the question just to have the conversation right. started by right. people you know and oftentimes someone might say something you know and I say should I respond to them and say no someone else is going <laughs> to respond to them and, and, and it usually happens you know? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. the purpose of my um, commentary on in social media is to just generate a, 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 a discussion and mm-hmm. to you know give people the opportunity to hear right you know to sometimes see the level of ignorance that is out there mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. at the same time also to get some information from persons who who are in a position to provide right. information based on real experiences because that does happen I do always notice that there's always some some sort of relevant information that gets immersed in there yeah but there's know? a lot of yeah. yes too, you, know? <laughs> yeah. and you, you have to just live with it there was, a, there was a time when i would in social media um wonder or think twice about whether i should delete a particular right. comment and i have taken the position that i i let every comment stay right right you right. know everybody's got um, an opinion yeah everyone has an opinion yeah. and sometimes it's good for someone to express themselves and see where they went wrong. Right. You right. know, if you, if you take them out of the conversation, then, you know, you don't really do them any good. Yeah. So I, I, they never I, learn. They never learn. Yeah. So I just allow it, and I oftentimes just observe, and mm-hmm. now and then I might say something. Right. Yeah. And how refreshing is it to hear somebody say, oh, man, I didn't know that. Thanks for the information. <laughs> that, that is good. That is good. And um, it encourages you when, you know, you're you know, participating in a discussion and, you know, people acknowledge that they have learned something from it. Mm-hmm. You know, that, cause that's the purpose of it, really. Right, right. I love that. I love that. And I, and, and I, I, I love sitting back and reading those comments, th- too, because, you know, I also get inspired when I see, because I've seen it several times where somebody actually learned something. Somebody who started out spewing just ignorance at the top. Yeah. You know, at some point in time, you get that, that, that enlightenment. Yes, somebody comes in the chat room and, um, and enlightens them because a lot of times it's almost like being the professor in the room. Sometimes you're just looked at as the professor in the room, but sometimes the the information they get for their peers yeah. can be a lot more impactful exactly. than they're going to get from the professor exactly. in the room. Exactly. You know, but keep doing it because I appreciate it and I know they do too. Um, changes. There's been a lot of changes in reggae music. And when I say I keep saying reggae music, I'm going to say Jamaican music. Yeah. All right. So covering the whole landscape. Um, changes for the better. Changes for the worse. Over the past, let's say five, six years. What are some changes you've observed that you think are good changes? Things that, because, you know, anytime we speak about music, and I say we as a populist because we all feel entitled to reggae music because we're passionate, you know what Mm -hmm, I mean? mm -hmm. But most times when people speak up, it's always the complaint. Mm -hmm. It's always the negative. They don't ever speak on what the positives are. What have you seen in reggae music in recent years that you you say, you know what, we got to do better off? Um, Well, I think we have... I, I, let me deal with the positives first. Mm-hmm. You know, as I mentioned earlier, you know the young artists who are really um, working hard at um, putting together good productions, writing good songs. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a positive. Um, outside of the creative inputs in our music, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot more that goes into making the industry work. Mm-hmm. Um, another positive I see is that there are, when I just started, I think I was probably the only attorney mm-hmm. who focused on music business. 
Um, there are a number of attorneys now right. in Jamaica who are, you know, offering guidance and, you know, support to the artists. That's another positive. Mm-hmm. Um, our music industry organizations are growing, you know, getting better. Mm-hmm. And that is also another positive. Now, I think on the negative side, I would say that we are not doing enough to adjust to the technology, technological mm. changes that right. are impacting music. Right, I right. mean, music business is technology business right. these days. Right. And I think we in Jamaica have not um, done enough to link the technology expertise that we have in Jamaica mm-hmm. with the creative And when we say we... Because I do notice that a lot of these young artists... We, we meaning the persons within the Jamaican community mm-hmm. who, are, who have technology skills. Right, right. Um, and this is from the, 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 the youngsters who mm-hmm. know it, as well as the corporate entities. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not doing enough, right, right, right. to my mind, to merge mm-hmm. with the music sector. So we're not keeping up. We're not let, a, let alone up. to catch up. We're not keeping up, mm. and that 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 is you know that is, to my mind, the biggest um, barrier to the development of the Jamaican music industry, mm-hmm. because it's technology driven. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the big companies in the music industry are technology companies. Right. You know, there are Google and Apple and mm-hmm. Spotify, and they're all technology driven. Right. And right. they are the leaders in the music industry right. today. And we have the capacity to, to do similar type things mm-hmm. within Jamaica and the Caribbean with our technology entities, gotcha. with our te- telecommunications entities. We're not doing enough. Right, right. You know, we can call them name, right. you know, Digicel right. you know, and Flow. Right. Yeah? They do some, right. yeah? but they tend mostly to interface with music to sell their products mm. so it's not about the music at all <coughs> um, it's, like, it's like it's like the music is just a vehicle to, to sell someone their products and their the services mm. Mm. whereas they could do a lot more right, right to right. to utilize their facilities as a, a a channel through which we can disseminate our music wow. to the public right. locally and globally we, we we're falling short there and for them, that wouldn't just be culturalism. It wouldn't just be patriotism. It would also be quite lucrative too. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely. Wow. So I think we are very weak in that area. Right, right, right. Well, hopefully they'll they'll, they'll be able to do some. Um, they'll be able to, to uplift the platforms that they're doing right now because I sit back and I observe the hip hop artists, the R and B, the pop, country. You know, even some of those genres that we're not most familiar with mm-hmm. until Grammy times when they hear somebody winning an award for bluegrass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but when I do the research, they're all up on things. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I oftentimes wonder if reggae music, and, and you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, reggae, from my knowledge, kind of blossomed out of the cry of the people. You know what I mean? It has that purest origin mm. somewhat. We're talking about love and peace and while at the same time speaking about the happenings of the inner city it's it's it's, it's the radio it's the newspaper when certain people weren't able to have access to radio in the newspaper mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it would give you that message that at the time we'd say radio is controlled the newspaper controlled so certain news they don't want to put on there but you could get it in reggae music yes. um coming from the people for the people that in itself almost comes across as the kumbaya mentality is like it's not that commercial so I always wonder if reggae music was ever set up from the get-go to be one of those most commercial genres. And I've had the commercial the conversations where people have said, no matter what it is, it seems like reggae will never be in the same pla- plane or as, as a hip-hop or, or, or R&B music because those music came out, though there was a message in those music from the get-go, they kind of came out glorifying certain things. You know what I mean? Materialism and, um, and, co- and the commercial space. And we're coming from, from, from roots, that this is absolutely true, and um, I'm going to make reference to my book mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know I, I asked myself a question when I was writing the book, you know whether the, the roadblocks that we face in reggae 
are self-imposed mm -hmm. or whether they're coming out of what you know we define as the Babylon system right you know which includes you know the, the mentality of the corporate community right right, yeah? right. and the establishment mm -hmm. yeah? um, as you say reggae music started and and grew because of its position the position that it took mm -hmm. globally in the 70s for example mm -hmm. You know, reggae music grew because of the stance that our artists took towards Africa. Right, right. That was the main reason. And everybody was subscribing to the liberation of Africa mm -hmm. and the anti-apartheid movement. Right, right. Yeah, and reggae music was like the soundtrack for the liberation of several African countries. Right. And that brought a lot of fans to the music mm -hmm. in that time. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it grew as a result of that. But the fact that reggae speaks a lot to struggle and discrimination and, you know, injustice and racism and things of that nature, those within the same Babylon system right. that want to maintain that status quo, mm -hmm. they will have a problem with reggae. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they do have a problem with reggae. Right. You know, so as a result... You know, there's a fight. Right, right. You know, coming you can't get away from that. You can't get away from right. that. You know, so that is a reality of the music because of how it was born and how it grew mm -hmm. and, you know, what it led to. Right, you right. Know, it, it, it produced a man like Bob Marley. Yeah. Whose words are as relevant today right. as they were 40 years ago, Isn't 50 that years ago. Because he's speaking right. to the truth of what is affecting, right. you know, minorities and people who are discriminated against around the world. Right, right. You know, and there are people in this world who do not want to right. level the playing field. Right, right, right. And we have to accept that. And that's what all yeah. music represents. Yeah. Yeah, so it's always going to it's always gonna get a fight. Yeah, yeah. Anything that, 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 that presents uh, a pushback yeah. against... Oppression, so to speak. And oppression yeah. takes on many forms. Many forms. Oppression right. could be somebody that looks just like you. Yeah. That's just not wanting to hear the word out there. Because a lot yeah. of times the word and the message contradicts what their word and message is. Right. You know, people trying to sell you something negative for a profit. Yeah. And you try to speak against it. You're, you're tapping into the, pro the profit margin right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you, so you're upsetting the upper card for a lot of people. Yeah. So, so, so I get you. you mentioned the start of reggae music and how it grew based on its relationship with, with Africa. Um, the music that is not necessarily the people, because you yeah. know sometimes we say Africa, but we just say it because it sounds dope yeah. to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Should 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 the ship pull up in Ochoa's Harbor and say, "Yo, Africa," we say a lot of people be like, "Really?" <laughs> but That's so true. But it sounds yeah. cool, yeah. you know. But the relationship between reggae and Rasta, yeah, all right, that too in itself was a strong pivotal point. My observation: music, reggae, Rasta. And I'm not even going to go to the 70s. I was born in 78. You know what I mean? So I missed out on the 70s. I, and I was too feeling it, but I wasn't understanding it. <laughs> but I, I, I saw the effect of reggae and the Rastafarian movement. I saw a lot of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I saw where Rasta was used to sell the product because it looks that the two went together. Right? Yeah. But the same image that you used to sell it was an oppressed image at home. Yeah. Right? Has anything changed? In terms of reggae and Rastafari and the, and the relationship? Um, that's a very complex issue. <laughs> <laughs> because if you, if you look at what um, reggae and the Rastafari message in reggae mm -hmm. preached and teach, taught mm -hmm. us, um, those are the things that are now hip. Right, right. You know, how you eat. Mm hmm Everybody, everybody wants to eat Italian. Mainstream now. Every, mainstream. <laughs> Whole Foods. Yeah, everybody, everybody wants to eat Italian. Right, everybody right. Wants to be a, a vegan. vegan. Mm. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, marijuana is the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. A boat which we missed. Right, and mm -hmm. and 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 it's over forty years. That Peter uh, ago that Peter Tosh was saying legalize it. Right, right. You know, Peter Tosh came before Dr. Sanjay Gupta. 
<laughs> long before it. We don't think we don't see that though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it it it's a complex issue because reggae music is is, is responsible, right, for the awareness, right, about marijuana, right, right, more, right. more so than almost anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? because we have been singing it and saying it right for decades. You right. Know? Right. The healing of the nation. Everybody is now in the lab. Right. Trying to heal the world. <laughs> Naturally. With, with CBD and right, right. what have you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. And everybody is trying to be vegan and right. eating ital. Wow. You know, and everybody is also using the language of Rasta. Right, right, right. You know, everything is Irie and I, iPhone and I this and I that. <laughs> <laughs> So true, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the profit margin not coming to the rest of it. Uh, Absolutely. So I mean, it's a very powerful music. Right. It's more powerful than most of us right. really realize. You know. So yeah, it's 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 reggae's relationship with Rastafari is 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 a significant one. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of reggae is about Rasta. Right. Right. Yeah, but the Rastafari component of reggae is has a significant role, played a significant role in the popularization of reggae music globally. Mm-hmm. And as I just pointed out, you know, it has impacted our lifestyles, right. you know, beyond, right. you know, the, the liberty of Rastafari. You right. know, people are embracing a lot of the, you know, the principles, the lifestyle, right. the teachings of Rastafari without saying they're Rasta. Right, 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 right. You know, the, way, the, way, the way people eat, yeah, and the fact that people are now focused on marijuana, yeah. I'm just gonna use those two examples, right? You know, and what has happened in Africa, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, going to Africa is, is was an experience for me. You know, it's a place that I dreamt of visiting, right? And I never visited Africa until you know my later years, right? Right. First time I went to Africa was in 2010. Mm-hmm. And I have been to maybe eight African countries right. since 2010. Right. Several of them more than once. You know, and, and I've learned a lot by right. just visiting. You know, to, to stay here and talk about Africa is one thing, but to be, go there. Yeah. You know, and when, when, you, when you reach there, and I'm going to look at it and say, welcome home. Wow. You know, it, 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 it just changes you, you know. Wow. Wow. Uh, that was the first word that was said to me when Welcome I home. set foot yeah, wow. in Africa. Welcome home. Right. And I heard that everywhere I went. Welcome home. Welcome home. Wow. Wow. That in itself is very powerful. Because I feel like, again, it goes right back to reggae music. We've been in a place that you are born and raised in, in Jamaica. You know, you know, you may reside in the U.S. at some point in time. But between Jamaica and, 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 and the U.S., you've probably never heard somebody say, except for the mat in front of the door, welcome <laughs> home. Absolutely. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And even if they said it, you don't feel it either. You don't feel it. But it's a different feeling when, yeah. you, when you set foot in. That's not what I expected to hear. Right. Right, right, yeah, right. So it kind of just it blew my mind, you know? Wow. Wow. We talk about reggae and Rasta. It's almost, we have to, reggae and ganja. So, because reggae has been the, and I'm going to say free, marketing tool for ganja. Absolutely. For all these years. All these years. Right? So they, we, we, we use reggae music to market marijuana. And then I won't say big pharma, but big somebody now pretty much decides, okay, thanks for the marketing. Yeah. All right? We're going to go ahead and now capitalize on this. Yeah. Because they don't have to do... They don't have to do the marketing anymore. You know. The marketing has been done. Yeah. All they have to do now is put, the, is, is, put, is put the name on the building that we sell it here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And personally, when I sit back and I observe that, I feel violated. You know, Because even at home, and it's not an American thing, it's not a European thing, it's a, I, I'm, I'm taking it back home. When a lot of people are persecuted and prosecuted for cultivating, selling, consuming marijuana, Right, which they weren't really doing it as a drug at the time. It's an herb for them, and then no, we still, as a nation, are behind it. But we've lost billions of dollars where we could have capitalized from yeah. marijuana. Yeah. But now, whatever capitalizing is going to be done, is going to be done by somebody other than the people who endured that struggle. Yeah, you know what I mean. How do you feel about stuff like that? Yeah, it it, it is already happening. You know, um, if you look at what is happening in the American um, 
reggae music market, mm -hmm. for example. Um, the American reggae festival market mm -hmm. has grown more than the festival market anywhere else in the world. Right. And if you look at what happens at a lot of these um, American reggae festivals, not all of them, but a lot of them, the young people who are, who are predominantly white kids mm -hmm. who go to these festivals, a lot of them go there to smoke weed. Right, right, right. That's what attracts them to right. the festival. So what we're now finding, and people are wondering why it is that there's this rapid growth in this new audience for mm -hmm. reggae in, in, in the USA. Mm -hmm. And what we're experiencing is something similar to what happened in the 70s. Right, right. Where reggae was connected to the African struggle. Right. No reggae is connected to marijuana right. in the United States. Right. So it is causing a second explosion of reggae music. Mm. You know, right. because the young white kids, they just want to smoke some weed. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they go to the festivals. They hear some good music <laughs> while I'm smoking my weed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that is now right. creating the fuel for the growth of those festivals. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. It's just something that I, I was just sitting down and thinking it through, you know. And I remember interviewing a, a sound system operator in California. Mm hmm. And I said, what is it about California? Why um, they have such a vibrant live reggae music scene? Mm -hmm. And his, his simple answer was, it's the weed. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't understand what he was saying. Right, 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 right. right. But yeah. now that you but, think but, about yeah, it. But no, I understand what he was yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. And how, how long ago was it that what, they had that conversation? About four years ago. Okay. So yeah. in the last night. <laughs> no, no. And he said, it's the weed. Wow. And, and it actually is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's the weed from many angles. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, it has attracted the young people. Mm -hmm. And um, weed farmers in California were the persons who provided the economic base Mm. For the development of the festival market, right, right, right. You know, right. just be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is why California has thrived, right, as a reggae market. It's the, the biggest marriage. reggae market. Yeah, the reggae marijuana marriage. Yeah. That's, so that's what he told wow. me. You know, that and know that you mentioned that. Yeah, and if you look at it yeah. deeply, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they, they 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 exist together. Yeah, it's a unit, it's a package. Yeah, it has always it has been that always way. been that way. Yeah, it has always been that way. It's just that we suppressed yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, 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 the and 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 I feel like this we've lost out in both ways because suppressing Absolutely. the marijuana. Yeah, we kind of, for lack of a better word, suppress the music too. Yeah. because at the time where you know people were against and against is what I'm gonna say, um, they were also against the music speaking on it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. So, so if they never want the marijuana in the streets, they definitely didn't want the songs about marijuana in the streets either. Absolutely. So they were, you know, I mean, they, they, they banned them from radio and all them things. Mm -hmm. So, it's it just amazing me as it amazes me how, as a as a people as a culture, and when I say that, I'm talking about the powers that be. We've managed to suppress our own music, our own viability, um, commercially. And just spiritually when yes. it comes to the music. Because I think that also contributed. Because if, if there's an airway to play music and you're taking off one thing, there's, there, there, there's room. So we got to fill it now with something. Yeah. And I think that's where the, the room and the avenue was left open for a certain type of music to then come and populate the airwaves. Mm -hmm. You know, so... um. You know, whomever responsible for them thing, they ain't for talk to them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk to them. You've worked with artists yeah. over the years. Yeah. Um, some more closely than others, yeah. right? I've always said, and, and, and this is based on convers having conversations with people who work in the reggae music business overseas, here in the U.S. and in the Europe and in the U.K., um, that a lot of the struggles that we have right now, it's like a generational thing. Bob and his generation came out, did what they did. Then we had a generation after that, which I think kind of mucked it up from a professionalism standpoint. And then I'm so proud of the youth right now, the protege generation, the chronics in them, right? Because when I speak to them and I ask not the artists themselves, but people in and around the artists, you know, camp, what is it that makes them successful? And the music is the last thing they refer to. 
they mention the fact that people find it easier to work with them. Mm -hmm. And the word that comes back is that professionalism. Mm -hmm. How badly have we hurt this industry by being unprofessional over the past decade or two? Very badly. Um, we have we have not assembled we have a tendency not to the artist that is mm -hmm. in the past and even still today have a tendency to surround themselves with people who um, don't really have a contribution to make to their development right you know they don't have the right team around them you know mm -hmm. they have hangers on right yeah so those artists I, I can't think of a, a, a Jamaican artist that has been successful without a manager. Right. I right. can't think of one. Right. You know, if, you, if you just go down the list from Bob Marley. All the way up. All the way up. They've all had people around them who support what they're doing and have a role to play. Right. And that is why they, they, they achieve, you know. Um, and that is the, 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 the foundation of your professionalism. You know, you need to have a manager, you need to have someone who is going to provide the legal guidance that you need um, to do your packaging and present you the right way. Right. Um, look at how these younger artists, and most, it, it has filtered through, you know. They, right. they, they, we have done a good job in terms of packaging and presenting ourselves. You know, um, but you need a team to do that. The right. artists... A qualified the artist's team. job is to focus on writing the good songs, going into the studio and making sure that it is properly recorded, right. and preparing themselves to be on stage. You know, that's their main role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you need a lot more, right. you know, to deliver, you know, to excel. Right. And you have to assemble the right team to do that, and they have to understand basic things like punctuality and. You know how to interact with the media, right? You know, and how to relate to your fans. You know, and that is what is called professionalism in the music industry. Right. You, know, you have to really understand that you're you're in a business mm -hmm. that requires um, attention to documentation. You know, contracts need to be right. um, prepared and signed in writing. Right. You know, because music business is one of those businesses where you're dealing with rights. You know, when you make a record, there are several persons who have mm -hmm. an interest in the record. Right. You know, so if you don't put in place the right arrangements among these various participants in the record, right. recording that you're doing, it's a recipe for, you know, disaster. Yeah. You know, so that's... Um, what is required, you know, in terms of your professionalism around your career to mm -hmm. ensure that you will make progress outside of the domestic market. Right. You know, right. The, the business internationally is, is a business. Right. You know, you have to approach it professionally to compete within mm -hmm. the international space. And that's another reason why we are lagging behind somewhat because we don't have um, enough competent managers and support personnel around the reggae artists. Wow. That, that, that being said, as an, as an attorney in the business, how much of your time is spent on helping artists to do it properly versus trying to save artists who have already started along the wrong road and doing it improperly? Um, I have done various things along the way mm -hmm. in the music business. I've done management of artists, which I have more or less withdrawn myself from because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's what's most needed mm -hmm. but it's also the most difficult. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know. It's a babysitting, a babysitting gig. It's a babysitting mm -hmm. thing. Um, so I would say that, you know, as, as an attorney working with artists, I find that um, the majority of the artists, you know, they, they, they tend to want to do things themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and they tend not to want to engage and pay professionals, mm -hmm. you know, to provide the services that they need. Right. You know, and that, that, that holds them back, you know, that prevents them from advancing. Right. You know, um, management is very important. 
you know, having legal advice is very important because, as I said before, you know, it's just about doing contracts and mm -hmm. protecting the rights that you have right. and ensuring that your copyrights are, you know, properly managed. You, right. know, you create something and you own the copyrights in it, but if you don't do the right thing, right. you know, you don't earn from that copyright that you, that, you, that you own from yeah. your creations, you know. Wow, it you know and and amazingly we this these things come up a lot in terms of copyrights and um, you know ownership, intellectual property, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and um, you know a, a perfect example lately is the whole Flogan situation mm -hmm. with him. He did his copyrights apparently properly on that one, so somebody used his material right, mm -hmm. and now he's able to go out there and seek you know, recompense for his work. Now, what I wonder, and the conversations I've had on my end of it is that, does this open up the Pandora's box now for all? Because we, it, it, doing, protecting our work is one thing. Violating other people's work is another. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now does that open the box now for all the people who we have went ahead and, um, and used their material um, without, you know, procuring the proper permission and, 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 and clearances. Well, um, music was always, um, people always made music from listening to other people's music. Mm -hmm. And people always copied other people's music, re-recorded mm -hmm. other people's music. And that is something that is encouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone writes a good song, mm -hmm. they want other people to sing their song. Right. There's nothing wrong with re-recording somebody's work. Right. Yeah, but there are certain things that you should do. You shouldn't re-record someone else's work and... And don't give them credit. And pretend that it is yours. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's nothing wrong with re-recording, but don't pretend, right. don't pretend that it is yours. Right, yeah. right, right. Credit the person so that the person can, you know, do, do what is required of them to right. earn right. from your cover right. recording or your use of a part of their work right yeah but there's nothing wrong with re-recording just do it properly just do it properly you know um the people in jamaica's music from studio one days mm -hmm. most of the songs not well maybe not most but a lot of the songs that we heard coming out of studio one mm -hmm. you know from alta nellis and you know a whole, a whole host <laughs> yeah. of people can both they were not original compositions. Right. Yeah. So right. We, we built our music from singing over other people's music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I hear people saying things like, why oh, people singing over Jamaican music, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Because that's how we built our music. Right. Right. We built our music in studio one day is by singing over American songs. Right. Yeah. So we shouldn't take offense when somebody does to someone singing over a Jamaican song today. Right, right. Not at all. Right. What we should take offense to is someone doing it without crediting. Right. Yeah, and we did some of that. Right. In the early days. And some people paid dearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> there out of people, business. There are people who paid dearly <laughs> from, from, from doing that. So what, yeah. what needs to happen is you, you, you hear somebody else's song, you're influenced by it, you take a part of it, mm -hmm. you credit the person so that the person can Right, you know, earn from your cover version of their song. Right, right, right. So it's 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 it's, it's not what you do is how you, how do, you it. do it, and, yeah. and there's not like doing it properly. And you need to respect people's rights. Yeah. That's basically what it boils down to. And what what you're gonna find, what we have found, you know, in our situation is that a lot of the songs that were done mm -hmm. by us that were cover versions of American songs in sixties and seventies, no action was taken. Mm -hmm. You know, because the songs probably never generated right. any income to make it worth, worth going to hire yeah. a lawyer to go and sue a little yeah. man in Jamaica. Right. You know, but the few songs that, that did that, something. that did <laughs> <laughs> went big. Were, they came were, for it. Right. They, they, right. You know, they, yeah. they, they, they were pursued legally, yeah. and you know, we know the stories. So don't think that they don't see. It is, yeah. it just, it's just not, it's not, worth, it's not, not worth it. It's, it's like the IRS. It. It, yeah, it's not <laughs> worth it to go pursue someone who right. re-records re a song that sells 500 copies. Right. But if you're going to sell hundreds of thousands yeah. and millions. We'll, we'll see you. you yes, and they're <laughs> going to pursue you. I love it. <laughs> now, 
I'm gonna drop a song or two for the masses right now. We'll come back. We'll get into reggae road blast because I think it's a it's a, it's a beautiful body. Um, it's a brilliant book. There's a lot of information in there, and what I love about reggae road blocks is it's not just a book about reggae music in my eyes. You know what I mean? So we're gonna touch that, ladies and gentlemen. We're chopping it up right now with Mr. Lloyd Stanberry. We're talking music. We're talking the culture. E. K. Dwight. Everybody, I appreciate y'all so very, very, very much. I'm showing you the picture of the book. All right. Make sure you go ahead and get it. There's a lot of information in here, especially sometimes the music books are out there. There's knowledge out there, mm -hmm. but this is a little different because it comes from our perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like music, but reggae music comes from our perspective. So, ladies and gentlemen, check this one out. It is called Fu Manchu, one of my faves right now. Hey, by the king, I said, long as I like bread. next time I think keep it rocking, rocking and swing. Hey, no. It's available on Amazon. To say what you used to do. That's where I got mine. Amazon's got everything. Is the face of food and This is the face of Hey Hope, how are you? Wanna well, lodge up Jorena? Matthew Caden. Coconut Creek's in the building. Coral Springs is here. Palm Beach is locked in. I appreciate you so much. Uh, hey, Suzette. Hey Lucia, Lodge of Kezai. True, true. This is the face of you. This is the face. What go on, Tanya Mullins? Lodge of my Canadian Massive right now. Appreciate y'all so much. Thankful for this gift of technology, making the world so much smaller so we can chill. Have a combo. Full Man Chew, ladies and gentlemen, it is the Lee Thompson Orchestra, Bitty McLean's, a big tune, one of my favorite joints right now. Um, I guess this is a, I'll have to procure an attorney for that one, that might be an, uh, yeah, I mean, a legal question. Um, what, somebody says, what rights does an artist have if he wrote the song, performed the song, got no credit on the album for the song, but someone else now owns the copyright? <laughs> that one, the, that one, the gun. <laughs> what, 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 um songwriters artists should do in the studio mm -hmm. um, they should insist when they're interacting working with a producer mm -hmm. that you know information is recorded in the studio as to who the participants are mm -hmm. you know, in the song that is being recorded right you know that's where it has to start you know that they should um, fill out 
a simple form right. that they can create themselves that says who who is the writer of the song, who are the musicians who are playing in the session, um, who the performer is, who the producer is. Right. And that information should follow the song wherever it goes. Because mm-hmm. once you lose track of that information, then you have to go through and jump through hoops. So many. Yeah. To, yeah. to, to prove your case, to, to make your claim. Right. So you have to start at the point at which the song is being recorded. Right, right, right. Um, if you have written a song and someone records it and you're not credited, it's, you're going to have to find a way to prove. Right. That you are the writer. If you, d- if you never did anything when you wrote it, mm-hmm. anything like um, documented the fact that you wrote the song. Mm-hmm. Um, there are various ways that people do it. In the United States, you have the opportunity to register your work right. in the Library of Congress. But there are some countries where there is no system of registration. Right. Um, the international, the accepted principle of copyright law is that you create something, you mm-hmm. own it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you don't take the necessary steps to demonstrate your ownership, tough to you prove. Know, it's, 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 you're, you're in a difficult spot. Mm. Yeah, so you have to do the necessary things, you know, and there are various things that you can do. You know, you can become a member of a collection society mm-hmm. where, you know, you you submit the work. That's a BMI and ASCAPs BMI's and so on. and yeah. ASCAPs and so on. You submit mm-hmm. the work to them where you claim that this is a, a work that you have written. Mm-hmm. Um, you can register in the case of Library of Congress in the United States. Right. Um, people have this thing that they call the poor man copyright, <laughs> where you, 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 mail it you, you write <laughs> the lyrics of the song and you mail it to yourself. There are various ways that you can you know, do things to demonstrate mm-hmm. that you are claiming ownership to the song that you have written. Right. But if you do nothing, right. um, it just makes it more difficult for you to prove your case. Not doesn't that you mean can't, you don't own it. doesn't mean it's you don't own tough it. To it's just more difficult for you to prove yeah. your case. Right. And in the United States, if you're going to file in court, mm-hmm. you know you have to have a registration, right. which is, you know, copy, um, Flower Guns copyright wasn't registered until 2017, <laughs> from what I understand. Right, right, right. right? Even though right. that song was written from way back. Right, right. Yeah, but it was registered. Um, we run things in 2017, I think, because they you know, realized that they intended to file or they mm. you know, to file a lawsuit. Right. So they registered it, which was, a, yeah, I guess he was advised right, by his right. attorneys to but do that never. first, right, right? register it, and then we can make a claim. Wow. And that's a thing. I, I When I speak to artists, because a lot of time I sit down and I speak to artists and I always say, personally, this is just me. I don't create in studios. So I will never go into a studio to go create anybody at work. Not only because of, you know, the obvious reasons, but the fact is there are other people in the studio. So next thing you know, somebody is plagiarism too. And it doesn't mean somebody's literally writing it down. But next thing you know, you, you don't do anything with it. And a year down the road, you hear that same thing because mm-hmm. somebody else was there and, and was privy to it and liked it. Mm-hmm. But I prefer to give me the instrumental, give me the track. I write my song at home, copyright my stuff, and then take it to the studio. I have many songs that are copyrighted that are not recorded, but I, I, I copyrighted them right then and there. And I always advise people, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of people creating this too because I better creating environment for them. Mm-hmm. But just in terms of protecting your work, it's not so much about that producer that's going to take your work and do whatever they want to do with it. It's, there, there's eyes and ears everywhere. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I've seen situations where people are having legal battles with not the producer, but just Joe Blow, who happened to have been in the studio mm-hmm. at that point in time. You know what I mean? So that's what I always encourage artists to do. One... Um, Question, and I see it here too, that a lot of people have challenge a challenge with is people who are given publishing rights to music created versus work for hire. Um, I think they have a grasp on the whole concept of the publishing, but what, what, what's the simplest way to, to define work for hire when it comes to creating music? 
Well, what, work for hire is a concept um, where, as as the words say, mm-hmm. your you work for hire. So you create something which is owned by which is owned by someone else. Mm-hmm. So you typically would have an agreement with say a a producer or a studio or a label Mm -hmm. where in that agreement it is saying that you're you are creating this work Mm -hmm. you're probably or you should be Mm -hmm. paid for creating this work but you're creating it for G. Cole recording company Mm -hmm. yeah so once you sign that document saying that this is a work for hire, right. it means that the work that you have created is owned by G. Cole right. Recording Company. Right. I was That's just hired to that play on you it. Were just, yeah. yeah. You were hired to create the work right. for someone else. Right, right. And that they person, maintain and the ownership. They, yeah, the person that, yeah, the person that you have created it for ends up owning it, mm-hmm. even though it's your creation. Typically, that is something that has to be in writing because right. your, your creative... Work can't pass from you to another person unless mm. it's in writing. Right. That right. is a stipulation of, you know, copyright laws almost everywhere. Right, that right. You create something, it, you're, you, you own it. Mm-hmm. For the ownership to pass from you to someone else, it has, it, to by, it has to be on the signature in a, in a written document. Um, and, and that being said, from my understanding from what you're saying, we may be talking to or about the artist right now who's saying, oh, well, you know what? We didn't concrete up this. But to me, the work for hire precautions need to be taken more by the producer, whomever is going to be the owner of that. So lack of a better word, if I have it and I pay somebody to do it, I need to insist upon getting that because later on, based on the level of success this record achieves, that person may come back and say, nope, it wasn't work for hire. Yeah, but a lot of times <clears throat> um, producers... And artists um, confuse the role of a musician, for example, mm-hmm. who is in a recording session. Mm-hmm. You know, when a producer hires a musician to come to a studio, mm-hmm. he's hiring the person to come and play. Right, right, right. You're not hiring the person to come and create. Create, yeah. Right? yeah. And, and a lot of people don't make the distinction between those two things. Mm-hmm. So a musician can come like Leroy Sibbles, mm-hmm. goes to Studio One mm-hmm. and he's paid by Coxon to play bass. Right. But he created the bass line. Right? Right. So right. He, 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 his arrangement is to play. Right. And he's paid to play. Right. But he created He was not bass paid line. to create. <laughs> right? Right, so right. You need to have a separate agreement that says. Right. A work for hire agreement that right. says this creation of yours belongs to me. Right. Without that, right. Even though the producer paid the musician, yeah. he's only paying the musician to play. Right. You know. So the musician has, has entitlement there. Yes. To his yeah, absolutely, wow. and that yeah. is where a lot of the confusion mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. in in music. Right. Yeah. People go there and they play, and they get paid to play, and sometimes the producers assume that they own the creation mm-hmm. of that musician, and it's not so. So ignorance but, doesn't only come from the part of the artist here, it's coming from the part of the producer. I think a lot, well. of time, a lot of times we get caught up in the whole, in the whole, the harder they come situation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's always the producers and the, and the man with the, with the resource that's capitalizing and, 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 and exploiting the talent. Yeah. But a lot of times it can go the other way too, yeah. where in a case like this, the musician was paid for a situation, but guess what? It became something and we don't have a written agreement. Say, hey. Yeah, that's my creation. Yeah, absolutely, and that happens a lot. Wow, wow. Yeah. So wow. We, have to be, we have to be very clear on what it is, what the rights are that people have mm-hmm. when a recording is made, mm. you know, and and what exactly is a musician doing when he comes to the studio? Right. If you want to own his copyright, then you need to give him a piece of paper to sign. Right. Right. <laughs> that says <laughs> that has the words "work for hire" in it. Right. If not. If not, you get us paying him to play. Right. Right, right, right. You're not right. paying him to create. Which normally, the situation in that is, you're, you, you're normally playing him to replicate something that's already created. Or, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. 
producers, get your game, get your thing in order. All right, because it's 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 business, and I think that's where a lot of us, especially not just Jamaicans but reggae musicians at large, have failed a lot. Is 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 realizing that it is a business. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I need to understand, you know, the implications of what you're doing. You know, right, right, right. Um, reggae roadblock, right? Reggae roadblocks. It's a, like I mentioned. It's a lot of info. It's a lot of info um, that I feel is not just beneficial to the reggae industry, the artists, the employees, the affiliates of reggae music, but just people who want to know how the wheels of the Jamaican music industry and the industry at large um, turned or never turned. Turned or never turned. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> or never turned, you know? And even you, and you highlight Brand Jamaica itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because all of this comes back down to Brand Jamaica. Mm. And, um, you know, what I would love to know is course we read 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 the acknowledgments and so forth and, and where you credit but what made you say i need to i need to i need to write i need to put this book together um i it's my experience mm -hmm. you know i'm working in the music industry for years and what i observed mm -hmm. you know i i just figured that there were a lot of roadblocks mm -hmm. you know um that prevented our music from from a business standpoint right you know, from rising to the level that it should. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to give you an example of why I say that. I mean, Bob Marley came and he made his music and he rose to the highest possible level. Right. right? Bob Marley has left us from what, 1981. Right. And there are so many other music forms that have come since reggae mm -hmm. and in the international music business space have surpassed reggae. Right. Like reggaeton mm -hmm. and hip hop. Right. Yeah, that were all born out of the Jamaican right. music experience. Right. Yeah. So what is it that prevented us? Mm. Yeah, what, is, like what, they yeah, what is it that prevented us? And mm -hmm. so I just looked at what I experienced over the years, mm -hmm. working with artists, working with managers, working with um, promoters of events, working with the media, mm -hmm. and you know, interacting with the Jamaican government right. and the Jamaican corporate sector. Mm -hmm. And I just tried to um, put in a book what I experienced over that period of time right. that seemed to be roadblocks right, right, that right. prevented us from taking our music mm -hmm. business-wise. Mm -hmm. Strictly from a business point of view. Mm -hmm. Because the music, as a man named Lucky Dobe said, mm -hmm. nothing can stop reggae. Right. You understand? Right, right, right. So the music, you can't stop it. But the business yeah. has not progressed Right, the right, business right. of reggae, from a Jamaican perspective, has not progressed to where it should have. Right, right. You know, um, we don't have the biggest reggae festivals in the world. Mm -hmm. And being, that, in, that in itself be, is being run, be, being run by Jamaicans. Yeah. Even at yeah. home. Yeah, the biggest songs on YouTube mm -hmm. that are dancehall, like Ed Sheeran, mm. is a dance hall song. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? Rihanna sometimes. Rihanna. Mm. Um, Despacito. Right. Is a dance hall thing that them call reggaeton. Right. So I, I looked at um, the top, a year or two years ago, the top 10 mm -hmm. most viewed YouTube songs mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Four of them was dance hall. Ever, ever, mm -hmm. yeah. So those are the kind of things that I'm talking about. What don't reflect it, but we and, don't see and, the residual. There were no Jamaicans participating <laughs> in any of those. Wow, songs, right? wow. So those are the things that I'm looking at. What is it that has prevented Jamaican people who created this thing mm -hmm. from rising to that level right. in the international space from right. a business standpoint? Right. What are the various things that have been roadblocks in our way? And that's what you're that, outlining in this book. And that's what I try to question in the book. Right. You know, some of it to me is government related. Right. Some of it is cultural. Mm -hmm. Some of it is coming out of the fact that a significant portion of what we were singing about was Rasta business mm -hmm. and Africa business. 
you know, with some people don't want to hear about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and push, it was and, niche. Right. A lot yeah. of it had to do with our own unprofessionalism. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of it also had to do with cultural differences, mm-hmm. you know, about how Jamaicans see homosexuality. Mm-hmm. You know, that has been a significant uh, pushback mm-hmm. to our music, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. So I, I tried to address in the book, in various chapters, these various things that we have encountered. Some right. are self-inflicted mm-hmm. and some are coming from how we interact with the wider global the world community, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they have all, to my mind, presented roadblocks to the advancement right. of our music from a business standpoint, right, right, not right. from how much people love it. Right. They can't stop reggae music. <laughs> we, <laughs> so lucky. we can't stop. We can't, right. we can't stop it. Right, people right. want it because of how it makes you feel and also what it is saying. Mm-hmm. We cannot stop reggae music from flowing right. It's like water. It's going to just flow. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But we can um, have instances and situations where from a business standpoint, um, the persons who are primarily responsible for generating this thing called reggae Mm -hmm. have not advanced as much as other people who have embraced reggae. Right, right, right. right. It's really a roadblock to primarily Jamaicans who Mm -hmm. are involved in reggae because Mm -hmm. Ed Sheeran never meet up on any roadblock. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. Rihanna didn't get the roadblock then. Neither did Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. Or Justin Bieber. Yeah. Or Drake. They were on the top <coughs> mic. Yeah, not, <laughs> they never, they, 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 nothing st- stood in their way. Right, and They right. did some dance hall songs. Right. You know, so we have to look at all of those issues before we can fix the problem. So we've seen, you spent a lot of years in this music from your younger years, right? Um, you saw the pioneers, right? Some of who became legends. We're gonna we're gonna even talk about the difference in the two because I you know some people but vex women say but I don't think every legend is a every pioneer is a legend you're just a pioneer you open the door mm-hmm. but you didn't create and accomplish what would be deemed legendary mm-hmm. status yeah. all right so you you you've seen some of them you've been there when they were doing what they do and um, we saw the residual effect of that and right now we see some youths coming back and trying to rectify the ills of their predecessors, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were there, because we always talk about hindsight being twenty twenty, Monday morning quarterbacking, when you were there in the midst of it all, um, back then in the heyday of, of reggae and the Bobs and the D Browns and all them people, when you were you observing and looking around and saying, oh, this doesn't, we're messing up from then? Or was it, you know, later on in life that you looked at it and said, you know what, we royally messed up? And I think one of the things that um, has happened to our music is in the early days, people were doing it more for the fun of making the music mm-hmm. and, and, and what it did to us. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it provided us with a means of entertaining ourselves and enjoying what we were doing. I don't think we realized then Mm -hmm. the impact that it would have on the world Mm -hmm. you know so it has out reggae music has outgrown jamaica right basically that is what has happened Mm -hmm. and then with the new technology it's exposing the music even faster and wider Mm -hmm. than it was then so we are now seeing wow (laughs) <laughs> what is this that we created you right know? right it is all over the world right. everybody has embraced it and everybody's right. putting their own spin on it and there are people who are not from jamaica who from from them born all them listen to is reggae right you know right and and it's a part of them right particularly people who, in africa you can't tell an african that reggae don't belong to africa right right and 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 and, and they have a very legitimate um, argument yeah (coughs) because our early music is coming out of our experience as africans transplanted to the caribbean the kuminas and kuminas and the naya bingi yeah you know naya bingi is coming out of east africa right you know 
and Rastaman embrace Nyabingi mm-hmm. and all kinds of other forms of African drumming right, right, right. and chanting. Right. And that was the early form of our music. Mm. You know, so, so they you do can't, have you, a can't, you can't tell an African that reggae is not their music. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 it's a part of them. Right. You know, right. so Africans playing reggae music with the same feeling that we have. Right. You know, and them come with that thing now that them call it Afrobeats. <laughs> and <Done the> <laughs> You know, yeah. you can see what it is doing. Yeah, yeah. And it's real. Yeah. And that one, I don't know if it's, I don't <laughs> think it's a fad. That one is, that, that was, that's, that's going to be around. Yeah. Afrobeats. Now, do you, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a abysmal question to ask. It, it all, it's, it's almost like mortality when it comes to human beings, but have we lost it? Have we lost it? Or, or, or do you think that, you know, with, with, with the proper, with, with, with the proper approach? Because here's something I, I'll say I'm very proud of. I like the fact that we're now in an era of trained and educated musicians. Give thanks to Edna for pumping them out like like a factory nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Alpha is doing that not as much as in heyday, but we're getting trained, educated musicians. What I would love to see a little bit more is trained, educated, everything else. Yes. PR, yeah. management, yeah. you know what I mean? And so forth. Um, but that being said, have we lost it? Um, I don't know if it, I wouldn't say we have lost it. Mm-hmm. Um, reggae music and all forms of Jamaican music to me it's like a gift, mm-hmm. you know, to the world. Mm-hmm. You know, um, everybody likes it, everybody loves our music, and everybody, em- as, you know, a lot of people have embraced our music, and right. that's good. Yes, I, do, I don't see it as being that, or losing the music. Mm-hmm. I see us as losing our place in the music business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, mm-hmm. music is for everybody's enjoyment. You know, and if someone in Japan just wants to play reggae, let them play reggae. Right. Yeah, if some youths in California want to play reggae or Hawaii, let them play reggae. Mm. You know, we should feel good to know that we have given the world this gift. You know, mm. what we have lost is our space in the business. Right, 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 right. You know, but people always connect reggae to Jamaica. Is, so brand, know, is, is reggae music more lucrative than brand Jamaica is? And I, and I wonder about it primarily from this standpoint. I, I, I oftentimes wonder if we have what, what I would call a... Uh, 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 a non-commercial culture, so to speak. And the reason why I, I wonder that is, for example, you go pick your wife up right now and you drive out the house and you go to the French restaurant. It's almost expected that that bill come into $100. You know what I mean? If it's decent or more. The Italian restaurant, a good one. You know what I mean? Uh, but if you pull up at a Jamaican restaurant and then get a buddies steam fish <laughs> you ever get in your life, right? <laughs> and so forth. And you get a bill that looks similar to that. Even... As a Jamaican, as a Caribbean national, it's almost like, nah, they're overcharging me. So I'm always wondering, right now, the, we have beaches in Jamaica that will rival beaches in Hawaii. Um, yes, from Miami to Jamaica is closer than Miami to Hawaii. But if you're in the middle of the country where it's, it's, it's the same distance back and forth, the ticket to Jamaica versus the ticket to Hawaii, you're going to say, why are you charging me so much for God, Jamaica? So I've always wondered if culturally... Over the years, we have devalued brand Jamaica. And as a result, reggae soars as it connects to the West Coast, the South Pacific, Europe, and so forth. But the, 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 the lack of um, commercialism and, and financial viability is when it's attached to brand Jamaica. Yeah, I think we have, we have um, always undervalued our own. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and that is why... A lot of what you are saying is happening in that inside of Jamaica, we don't value our own, mm-hmm. the things that makes us who we are. Right, right. You know, we, we don't put a lot of value on those things. People from outside put more value on the things that we, that make us who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that r- runs across the board. Right. You know, um, as to reggae versus brand Jamaica, Jamaica is 
It's a weird place. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's just, Easiest way to put it's, it. It's a place that you, you, it's, it's hard to explain yeah. and goes beyond just music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not just about the music. There mm-hmm. are just so many things that Jamaica and Jamaicans have excelled at. You know mm-hmm. I mean, it's got you saying Bolt. I mean, it's just crazy you know, yeah, yeah, that yeah. We, we do the things that we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. With, so the limited, what, with the limited resources, with the limited, resor- mm-hmm. limited resources as well as the lack of adequate support. Right, right, right. We right. still excel mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. It's not mm-hmm. just with the music, but everybody wants a jerk something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere in the world, you know. Anywhere you, in the world, it's amazing. You say that I've traveled. I, I tell people this all the time. I've seen more countries than I've seen parishes in Jamaica. Right. I have never been to a country in the world and not seen the, the fake Jamaican restaurant. <laughs> the, 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 the knockoff. Somebody selling a, jerk, a Bob Marley t-shirt. Or a jerk, so something. jerk, she, jerk yeah. something. And <laughs> and that's the potency and the prehensibility of our culture. But it seems like everybody knows how to capitalize on it. Except us. Except us. Yeah, so the, I think it, 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 we, we have fallen short in terms of First, valuing what we we are mm-hmm. and what we have created, and taking the necessary steps to encourage and protect and promote mm-hmm. what we are and what we have created. Right. Yeah, and and that is the explanation for what you have experienced and what we have all experienced. Right. 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 We 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 have to we we are we are the ones who have to put value on our stuff first and foremost. We should right. define what reggae is. Right. You know, and don't allow people to call it raga. Right, 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 you right. Know, I don't know what raga is. Right. I know reggae. And I hear some people talking about something that they are now calling modern reggae. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is either. And they're calling it modern reggae because it is fusing some rock or alternative rock in it. Right. Bob Marley been doing that. For years. <clears throat> and Third World been doing that. <laughs> Still Peter Paul's Tosh, been doing and that. And Peter Tosh played yeah. Buckingham Palace and yeah. Johnny B. Good. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. Concrete Jungle. Yeah. Some of the wickedest rock guitar solos. Yeah. 40 years ago. So there's no modern reggae. <laughs> You're doing what we've always done. We, what we have always done. You know, we, we mentioned government. I had a conversation with somebody before when I say the government have, um, they have, and they continue to, to some degree. Yes, they've done more in recent years, but fail us in terms of reggae. Somebody said to me, well, and I agree, do any other country rely on their government to push the music? My response to that was that, well, no other country relies on the music to brand their country like we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hip hop, R&B, pop is not the major export. It's not the major um, production of the United States. So I would see why the government would care less about that's 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 private sector. Yeah, yeah. Jamaica reggae music. Reggae is Jamaica. Reggae is our export. Reggae is what yeah. brings people in and have people look in. So, I, so, so, so from my vantage point, that is why I would expect the government to play an intricate role or, or, or at least more of a role. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and even without that being the case, mm-hmm. there are a lot of countries that place emphasis on cultural mm-hmm. development in terms of providing support. Mm-hmm. You know, even though you know they might not necessarily have cultural products that stand out mm-hmm. as much, relatively speaking. Right. As our music stands out, and you speak yeah. of UNESCO. Yeah, there are there yeah. are countries who, um, through their government and through the private sector, place a lot of emphasis mm-hmm. on funding of culture. Mm-hmm. You know, and and relatively speaking, from a music standpoint, their music is not as valuable. As is reggae. Uh, to their country, right. as reggae is to well, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So yeah. even if, so, so there are two reasons why we should be getting more support mm-hmm. from the corporate sector mm-hmm. and the government inside of Jamaica to our music because our music is so important. Right, right. right. <laughs> you know, to, to who we are. 
Yes. Yeah, that we should we should have a ministry just for the music alone. Just for the music. Just not, for the music not, not music and culture. Just no, just music. for the music alone. There should be a whole department of right. government in Jamaica right. that's dedicated to music. Right. And I think that it had had it been that way, things would be a lot different. Absolutely. If well, if the right persons that too. If the right persons are, <laughs> are, are, are brought in by the right. government and the private sector right. to develop the policy. Because industry development is a partnership between government mm-hmm. and private sector. Mm-hmm. You know, when I keep saying government, a lot of people say, well, leave out the government. Mm-hmm. I don't know of any country where the government don't play a role in the development of an industry that right. they consider to be important. Right. If, right. The impo- if the industry is important to the country, mm-hmm. the government has a responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes a responsibility of the government. Yeah, absolutely. To, to, to ensure that that industry mm-hmm. is properly developed. Especially we in a case f- like Jamaica, where that industry is absolutely. probably the most viable. We have failed yeah. in that regard Big time. in Jamaica. Big time. Mm-hmm. Not just the government, but the corporate sector and yeah. the persons within that, the industry itself. Right. And I use the word industry with quotations. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. Um, a very contentious relationship over the course of the past however many years has been between the Grammys and Jamaican people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that we have a rocky romance with the Grammys, right? Um, to the point where people say, and I think this is nonsense, but people say all the time, ah, I hear people say, I'm, I'm not watching Grammys. I'm not really business with the Grammys, but every that's January. What, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But every <laughs> January after the Grammy result, the same people are complaining. And my thing is that if you, if you weren't paying attention, you would know what's going exactly. on to complain. No, we had our stab at even our own stuff, the jammies and different things that we as a people don't support, right? But the Grammys, nine times out of ten, we disagree with even the nominees. Mm-hmm. This year is one of the few years that I don't think people disagreed with the nominees. Primarily because, no ma- and I think it's because no matter who brought it home, it was one of us. In the past couple of years, there was always a possibility that it gone. So I think that's one of the reasons why people you know, had, a, had a better reaction to the nominees this time. Now, when the winner was announced, and then there was a little bit of a rumble you know, for, for, for a bunch of uh, reasons. How do you view the Grammys and reggae music? Um, <clears throat> well, I think the Grammys, um, in principle, it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it is good to have uh, a means by which people are recognized mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for what they do right. in a given period of time, which is what the Grammys is, is trying to do. Mm-hmm. Recognize, um, I'm, I'm putting it in my own words, creative excellence in a particular year Mm -hmm. and it's good to have that Mm -hmm. you know like any organization you know you're gonna have issues and uh, as we are now hearing the ceo (laughs) of the 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 academy (laughs) is was suspended because she makes some sounds about what she observed right right within the voting process right and you know we and other people have always been, you know, um, suspicious of the process. Right. And apparently rightly so, because the CEO is now saying she saw some <laughs> hunky-punky taking place. Right, yeah. right, right. So the, the concerns that people have had about the voting process are, you know, legitimate and real concerns. Right. We love to talk, and as I said in the beginning of this <laughs> discussion, we love to talk sometimes about things that we don't study. Right. Because the grammar is not about who sold the most records. Or even or the best who, music. Or, or who was most popular. Right. That's not what the criteria is. Mm-hmm. It is it is supposed to be something about creative excellence. excellence. But is yeah. that really the case, though? I'm, doing, I'm just telling you what it is supposed to be <laughs> okay, according okay, okay. to the, the rules according and, to the bylaws, right? and the bylaws. Right. That's what it is supposed to be. Right. Eh? But a lot of times the, the, the conversations that happen after the Grammys, the reggae Grammys is, mm-hmm. you know, this one was more popular than that one and this one was on the chart and sold more. Mm-hmm. That is not what the criteria 
is. Right. Yeah. Right. And it is not what the public thinks mm -hmm. is number one. It's gonna win. Mm -hmm. The Grammys is what the voting members of the Academy think. Right. Right. In terms of creative excellence. Right. And what needs to happen is that more persons from the reggae community need to get involved in right. the in the um process academy yeah. so that they can vote so that they can cl more closely observe and see if Anki panky really <laughs> going on right, right and you can't right, right. you can't stay on the outside and say there is Anki panky right <laughs> You know, I just get, feel it in my you gut. You just feel it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, might, you might be right. Yeah. yeah. But it is better to be on the inside where right. you're a part of the process. You're a member of the academy. You have a vote. Right. You know, and you can lobby. Right. You know, you can change an institution more easily by getting on the inside of the institution. Right. And that's what I would encourage, you know, people in the regular community to do. Right. To become members of the academy. Right. More of them become members of the academy and work their way to the place where and functioning members, functioning members, right. where they can have a vote in terms of how the whole thing is structured. And if there is, like any organization, if there is something that's not being done right, the membership should, as I said, be functioning members mm -hmm. and vote to get the right persons on the board. Right. I might sound somewhat idealistic. Right. Because in the real world that we live, mm -hmm. we know money <laughs> changes things. Yeah. You can have a set of bylaws. Right. And people with, well, I don't even want to go into the politics <laughs> of the United States. Affluence right and influence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we know what money does. Right, right. And greed does. Yeah. 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 You can have systems, you can have a constitution, mm -hmm. and that means nothing mm -hmm. because greed and money override what a constitution right. is supposed to do. And, and the same thing applies to any organization like NARAS or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it might be a little idealistic, but mm -hmm. it's the only way. Right. You know, if you set up an organization and it has rules and bylaws and what have you, then the membership should try to ensure that these are followed. Right. Yeah, and if you don't if you're not a member, you don't have a say. Right, 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 right. Let your voice be heard if you have a voice. Um when it came, you know, when when when, when Grammy nominees poured in, right? I always I, I asked two questions because I always feel like whenever somebody says, Who do you think is gonna win? The answer you're getting is really who they want to win, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I, I gave it twofold and I said, hey, I'm asked two questions. I'm asking you who you think is going to win and I'm asking who you're rooting for, who you want to win, right? Mm -hmm. I personally, I thought Coffee was going to win. I was rooting for Third World. Um, uh, yeah. Did the outcome surprise you? Um, no, not at all. Not at all because um, Coffee is, was, the only yeah, was the only artist nominated in the reggae category that is on a major label. Mm -hmm. And being on a major label means that you, there are so many persons within that organization. Visibility. Alone. Not just visibility. There are so many persons within the organization that she's signed to that mm -hmm. are members of the academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I mean, how does she lose? <laughs> it was her battle. It was you her race to lose. Yeah, how does she lose when she's signed to yeah. a label that probably has several hundred persons right. within that organization right. that are members of the academy. Right. Yeah, so right. she she had a um, a leg up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but like you and like a lot of people, they were rooting for Third World. Right. Because best body of music. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're talking about the work, like we said, if yeah. we're talking about musical excellence, not to knock Coffee's thing, because I, I I think her EP is dope, but. From a musical excellence standpoint, if we're, if we're putting it on a scale and just weighing it, mm -hmm. the third world album, and to me, outweighed everything else. Mm -hmm. But if you're being practical, like you said, yeah, then all roads lead to just based on the fact that you know, you know, and, and don't get it twisted. It's not a knock against anybody because we no, always try all, to not at all, not you know, because Kofi's um, EP, mm -hmm. which I struggled for a while to understand how an EP. Um, qualified as an album but then I, I discovered that the definition of an album within Naros is I think five songs qualify 
Five or fifteen minutes, something like that. Yeah. Mm. It says it's, it's, it's the, the the number of songs and the, the, the duration of right. the recording. But there was a time when they didn't even let that in. Mm. I, I personally, my personal thought on it is that, like you said, the Grammys are supposed to be the organization that 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 that, that acknowledges musical e- excellence. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple of years where the best in music was an EP. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So because it it started a couple of years ago with her. She won for an EP. Mm-hmm. Jay Boog's mm-hmm. submission was an EP. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what it was, yeah. why they had those. But re- but regardless, you know, it's like I said, the, the, there are certain things that are going to, one on one, I always make two. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's going to go down that road. But they have defined an album. Right. That, And the definition of an album mm-hmm. for, for the economy would include what we're calling an EP, an EP, as long as it has a certain number of songs, which I think is right. five. And as long as the, the EP, Play length. The play length of the EP is mm-hmm. over a certain number of minutes. Right, right, right. It qualifies. So she qualified. So she qualified. Right. Yeah, so we, right. we can put that aside. Put that aside. Yeah, all of those who are saying it's an EP, it's not an album. Mm-hmm. The definition of an album, Kofi qualified. She qualified for it. She qualified. So yeah, all disqualifying, you know, traits that we're looking for, this, she, she met it. Yeah. And some. Yeah. Um, in the introduction of your book, right? Chris Blackwell says the golden age of Jamaican music is past because of the amount of excellent writing, performing musicianship and production that existed then that caused a wave that is still traveling around the world. I'm quoting him. What were your thoughts when he verbalized that? Um, it's hard to, to me, it's hard to make that kind of statement. Mm-hmm. You know, because who knows what's going to happen next year? And, and or, I, I think or, or there's the some next, excellent songwriting going on. Over now. the next five years. Mm-hmm. But I think the point he was making is not something that is confined to reggae. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of music that was coming out in the United States in the 70s. Mm-hmm. I don't hear that music now. Right, right. You know, so it's not just reggae. Right. There was something music about, as a whole. Yeah, there was something about the 70s. Mm-hmm. That music... I don't know what was in the atmosphere or in the water right, 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 <laughs> in the right. 70s, but the music that was made right. across the board in yeah. that period of time is of a very, very high standard. Yeah, yeah. You know? But to say that it will never be re- replicated or duplicated or repeated is, is a stretch. It's an overly bold statement. Yeah. You know, up to this point in time, we could say. you might say that that period was the best. But to say it's gone means that it will never come back. Uh, that's kind of putting it a little bit far. Yeah. I, I chalk it up to the climate because, I, you know, and I say this to people all the time. It's what was going on because people write about what's going on, right? Mm-hmm. We do have imaginations. We create, you know, we, we, we embellish. But for the most part, we're writing about what's going on. Mm-hmm. That, there was a time, even as we, we dial it back to reggae music. The stuff, the content Bob Marley was putting out was relevant to the to the to the era, to the time, and to what was going on. If Bob was born in 1982, he would not sung "One Love." You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He probably would not say "Kaya would not about Exodus would not about." Just based on the climate right mm-hmm. now. So when I saw that statement, that was what came to me in terms of, you know, the climate's different. So should the should the climate shift, which we're getting there right now, to something similar, then we'll we'll, we'll have that kind of information. Because right now, when I when I when I when I when I observe the writing that's going on right now from from the chronics of the industry and the proteges of the industry and stuff like that, and the coffees and the coffees of the yeah. industry, and, and 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 I could call a lot more names: the Jesse Royals, a whole yeah. bunch of people. It does rival. Then I think what the major difference, and again, humbly my opinion, is that. There's a lot more offset right now because back then there were a whole lot less artists and musicians doing it. So there was a whole lot less BS to balance out the scale. Mm -hmm. Most people were on that trajectory, on that plane, where right now, as many people who are putting out topics of of relevant content is as many. You probably have more rubbish. (laughs) More crap that's going on out there. So I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know, um, and also in the introduction, Copeland Forbes said the support needed from government is weak. He said that he, 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 he's been to the government, Jamaica government, many a times um, with plans and ideas and about what's going on on the international scene. And they looked at him as though he was speaking a different language. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, that's what you've also seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the point you just made, you know, in, in, in the 70s, 
a lot of the musicians then were excellent musicians. Mm -hmm. You know, Alpha produced a lot of them, and you know, others came from being self taught right. and from learning inside of the studio and school as well. But today, what do we have? Right. We have Edna Manley College. Right? College of YouTube. And Edna Manley College has put out dozens yeah. of brilliant musicians over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. So to say that the golden age of Jamaican music is past yeah. is a stretch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, because these youths that are graduating were proficient right. and trained as musicians. Right. Let us wait. You're putting a ceiling on, 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 on yeah, something. Yeah, let us wait and yeah. see what they're going to do over the next few years. And we're already seeing signs of it, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of brilliance out there. Yeah. And um, I, I also think that there was an era where certain lyrical content, what we would deem culture, was almost being shunned too. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like even from a, a peace and effect standpoint, when we had that little era, I think it was maybe late 90s or maybe early 2000s coming up, the Sizzla Kalanji era, where, every, where there were half a dozen Sizzlas. You know what I mean? Everybody sound like Sizzla now, but it had that effect too. And there was an ear listening for that. And I think when that crop of artists kind of swung the pendulum to the other side, mm -hmm. then it had a dire effect on that too. But I think we're coming back and ears are more now open to hear this mm -hmm. kind of music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. so from my standpoint, I think that has a, that has a, has a significant effect on it. And, um, and I'm hoping that they continue to do that because yeah. people can be persuaded a lot. When, when, when you're doing solid, good, proper, positive works and it's not being rewarded and you see the negative being rewarded, then... It can be discouraging. It can be highly discouraging. Yeah. Let Lady Saw tell you her story. <laughs> you know? So she's, she's gone, like, in a full circle. Yeah. Because I've heard her say, you know, that when she just entered the music, mm -hmm. you know, she, she never wanted to do what she did. Right. Yeah, but she did it. And it worked. And it worked. And then there came a point in time when she said, I, I can't do that anymore. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you know, so what is happening in the environment definitely can Right. Influence the direction that you take, you know. Yeah. Don it still started out as Bimbo the DJ. DJ, yeah. Because he probably <laughs> figured that that was the way to go. Right, right, yeah. right, right. And then he just found his real place. <laughs> yeah. So you can be influenced. Your direction can be influenced by the environment that you're in. Right, right, right. I, I and I said this to you earlier before where I feel like there's a there's a huge difference. There's a little bit of a, a line in the sand between the, the upcomers and what I call the OGs, you know what I mean? The the, the, the vets. Mm -hmm. Where the veterans are always complaining that, you know, that the youngsters don't give them the props and the respect when truth be told, I feel like they do give it to those who demand and have earned it. But there are a lot who have not, but they're requiring that respect just based on tenure. Mm -hmm. And that's why I and I solidly feel like there's a difference between a legend and a pioneer. There are many people right now who consider themselves legendary, but truth be told, you're pioneers. You were mm -hmm. you you were there at the beginning of the process, and you may have helped to open a door, mm -hmm. but you didn't contribute that much to to warrant being considered a legend. And a lot of people, you know, oppose that. What do you think about something like that? Would you agree? Disagree? Yeah, there is a yeah. I agree with you. There's a difference between being a pioneer in a particular field or area, and you know, earning legendary or the word that is bestowed on people so easily in Jamaica, icon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every every other person is an icon of our music. <laughs> you know, I mean, those words should be reserved for people who have actually made significant right. Impact on the culture, on the culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we use them loosely, yeah. There's a difference between someone who pioneered an initiative or an effort or a movement mm -hmm. and someone who has gained legendary or iconic status, right? There's a and, and we should, you know, identify the difference, right? But to the point about um, 
getting props and you know elders in music or whatever field right um being recognized by younger people we have that's a big that's another part of our struggle right in jamaica you know the the the, the disconnect mm -hmm. between younger persons in the field of music and mm -hmm. older persons in the field of music right both creative as well as you know support providers to the music industry we need to bridge that gap right you know the the, the older heads need to respect the youths right you know and and, and allow them yeah, and but the youth also need to respect the elders, right? Right. You know, and know that there are a lot of things that they know mm -hmm. that the youth don't know, and they could benefit so and much they could from benefit that. So much. So yeah. there, there needs to be a bridge between yeah. the younger people in the industry, right, and and those who were before. Right. You can't keep them separate and apart. Right. And right. All the heads said, boy, you them, uh, you know, what am I <laughs> doing? Know why you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and the youth them said, boy, you're an old boy, you know, you're, you're right. elder or elderly. Right. You know, and right. your time is gone. No. You know, there's a lot that both can learn from each other. Right. And we need to find a way to bridge the gap between the two. Right. You know, that will help us right. as well to move the thing forward. I love it. I love it. I got a bunch of people here who are who've been logged in from day one, just listening again all across the globe, tuning in right now. So, so thank you all so much, and and, and thanks so much to you. I got there. There are a couple of questions I have that I think they're rather instrumental to to to, to life as a whole, to mankind as a whole. To if and just the answers to these questions are pivotal in how we're going to move on. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You won't have even time to really think about them. It's just <laughs> it's just some real. It's a real instrumental life and deathers right here. Um, cake or pudding? <laughs> as to where we, uh, you mean as to where we are? Which do you prefer? Are you a cake or pudding guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would consider myself a pudding person. Pudding? Yeah. Uh, so what's up or sweet up? So what's up? So what's up? Yeah. Reggae or dance song? That's a hard one to um, answer mm -hmm. because sometimes it's hard to distinguish between the two. True. You know? True. And sometimes I, I, I prefer not to um, have them compete. Right. Right. You know, because they're so intertwined. You know, that some, some, for example, sometimes you will hear a song that is both reggae and dance on. Right. And yeah. you have a lot of artists who are both dancehall and reggae. Right, right. You know, so I like them. I love them love both. Love them both. Yeah, I do. You know, amazingly enough, you said that. I, I said to somebody the other day, there are many a songs from the 90s and early 2000s yeah. that were considered dancehall that in today's space would be considered reggae. Exactly. You know, so we have to be careful. I, 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 my, my preference is not to pitch dancehall against, against reggae. That is my preference because... Sometimes you can't tell the difference. Right. There, there are so many songs that are both reggae and dancehall at right. the same time. Right. A lot, a lot of songs are like And a lot of artists are both reggae and, and dancehall dance artists. I love that. I love that. Football or cricket? Well, I, I have to choose cricket. As it's, the, it's the only sport that I actually, you know, Play I think it? I played well. <laughs> <laughs> so cricket all day? Cricket, yeah. Beach or river? Uh, I, w I would probably say neither. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not a water person. Not a water person. I mean, I, I always say anytime I see a fish walking down King Street, <laughs> <laughs> anytime I see a fish walking down the street, then right. I, will, I will choose beach or river. <laughs> but until but then. Until then. <laughs> Saturday or Sunday? Probably Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. That's me. All day. All day. Sunday's Monday Eve. <laughs> 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 to me, that is. So it, it always has a little bit of a, a little sour taste, uh, you know? Uh, uh. I want to thank you so much for passing through it. Truth be told, I have learned so much, but you're somebody I probably need to speak to once a month. <laughs> <laughs> a chapter a day you know what I mean but uh, I thank you so much because so many people I always tell the people 
you know, it's cool when the artists come to the building. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You see your favorite artist come in or whatever the case may be. But definitely, there are times when y'all need to dial in because we, 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 we talk about information as though it's something we don't have. But I feel like we're lacking in knowledge seekers too because a lot of times, you know, when the information is there, people, you know, it's, 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 it's not entertainment in their eyes. Yeah. So, you know, but for those people who are, so many people are locked down here near and far. So they benefited a lot. So did I. So I definitely want to say thank you so much. This book, Reggae Roadblocks. Where, tell, tell the masses because somebody did ask. I got mine from Amazon, but tell them where they can where they can get the book. Well, you can get it from Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also get it from Barnes and Noble online, mm -hmm. and you can also get it from if you want a autographed copy. You can mm -hmm. get it from my website, my which is LloydStanbury dot com. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is available at my website. It's available at Amazon. It's available at Barnes and Noble online as well so all the there are there are a few bookstores in jamaica that i carry physical carry like sangsters and kingston bookstores nice yeah. nice 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 um I, I like the book because it's it the the, the, the description i'm going to give you that it's a whole book you know what i mean it's not a lot of times somebody say yeah i put out this book and it's got some information it's kind of pamphlet you know what i mean mm -hmm. or, or, or or a little brochure it's a whole book and it's a there's an array, there's a, there's, there's, there's a plethora of information in here. And I treat it, like I say, not just, I'm reading, trying to do the cover to cover, but I treat it almost like my encyclopedia. You know, where I go in and, 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 I, and, I, and I go straight to a, a passage, a place in there, find the information and I want. But I think it's, it's an easy read. I like the book because it tells me a lot of what I've been thinking about, questions that I've asked myself. And I didn't know where else to get it because most books that you go in, all you get are theories. You know, you don't get people's experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love about this book. This is this is your experience and your knowledge. And worst case scenario, we can always hit you up on Facebook and say, oh, page 106, like. <laughs> 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 what do you mean by this? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so, so the website is the best place to connect. Um, social media? Um, I'm, I'm on Facebook as Lloyd Stanbury mm -hmm. and on Twitter as... Stanbury Lloyd and on Instagram as Lloyd Stanbury. I can reach through you know those platforms. And those people who need professional help and need they can reach out to you in terms of yeah music. Absolutely. No, before actually also let talk to me a little bit about um let me close this one down. Talk to me a little bit about Majesty Media. Well, Majesty Media is an entity that was formed three years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, between myself, it's a partnership between myself and Sister Irie, who is a radio DJ, photographer, and writer based in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And over the past three years, we have been providing publicity services to a number of artists. Mm -hmm. But apart from providing publicity support, we are developing our own little bit of content, mm -hmm. you know, from... Um, video snippets that we capture by going to music festivals all over the world, um, interviews that are conducted, um, articles that are written by, you know, us. Uh, so we are developing a, a library of content mm -hmm. as well as providing um, publicity services to artists and now we're going to be providing public services to, also, to events as well. Mm. Uh, we operate, a, we have an official website for Majesty Media. We have a YouTube channel for Majesty Media. Mm. We have a SoundCloud channel for Majesty Media. Nice. We're on Facebook, we are on Instagram. So through those platforms, we generate content, mm. you know, for persons who are interested in arts and culture gotcha. basically so that's what majesty media is about it's just three years old but we have developed a network right. of persons around the globe who are interested in arts and culture um, issues related to jamaica the caribbean africa 
Gotcha. That's, that's not my just the media is at all. And for those people who need information on it, more information on how they can network and, 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 and participate in it. Just just like you find Lloyd Stanbury by putting Lloyd Stanbury, mm-hmm. you find Majesty Media by putting <laughs> Majesty Media in Facebook right. or Majesty Media or Majesty Media Global mm-hmm. at Instagram and you know MajestyMedia.net right. is the website. Right. And Majesty Media on YouTube, Majesty Media at SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. And in any one of those channels, you will see what Majesty Media has been doing. Right, right, right. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me when I say the information is there. And uh, Mark, blessings, uh, Christine, Alicia, everybody across the globe listening in right about now. I want to thank you all so much for, for spending your time with me this evening. Um, hopefully one of these days we could get Mr. Stanberry back in here because there's a whole bunch of other things that we could get, we, 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 we could go through. Um, knowledge is power and there's nothing I enjoy more than gaining some of that knowledge. So, when, sir, I, when, when I update the book, which I intend to do. Mr. The, the, the reg, Reggae Roadblocks Part 2? Yeah, it's going to be updated. I think it is deficient in terms of capturing what has happened in the Latin American reggae mm. scene. We touched on it a little bit, but right. Latin American reggae scene is mind, Some, mind-blowing. Something to behold That's, right yeah, now, yeah. 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 So, you, so there's going to be a, 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 a 2.0? Yeah, we're going to update it to expand on that aspect of what's happening in reggae. Any timeline? Um, it's hard to put a timeline on it. I've been thinking about it. Um, I've started to jot some notes down. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, within the next year or two, I can, you know, finish what I'm doing and right. have a new edition of Reggae Roadblocks out. Love it. Well, in the meantime, grab this one because, again, it's a lot of valuable information. A lot, a lot, a lot of valuable information. So go ahead and add it to your collection. And, again, go on the website and get your autographed copy, as I will get mine copied, autographed a little differently. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure is mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate y'all so much. And there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, available now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, and all your podcast platforms. Please check out the website, homegrownwithgcole.com, to listen and for all things homegrown. To watch the video of this interview, it is available on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole, and this is Homegrown. Nakikinika sa musica, Homegrown with G. Cole. Estás escuchando Homegrown con G. Cole. Nin xinzai zheng zai shou ting de shi, Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember, all the music played here on the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Please support the artists.